And then we kind of get to the, the extreme measure for your really, really chronic, horrible, horrible inflammation that is refractory to every other type of therapy. And that is actually surgical extraction of the teeth. Um, and this can be simply, you can do the caudal teeth, which are from these premolars here back and not involving the canines or the incisors. Or you can do full mouth, which is everything. You just take everything out. Um, and the judges are out. It depends on who you talk to. Um, some people say, don't even try any of the other things that I listed as possible help. Just pull the teeth. That's the only way you're going to have, your only way you're going to get any relief for the cat, just pull the teeth. That's all well and good, but I mean, this is a pretty major surgery. And, and you're, you're taking out the teeth and you're taking out a lot of bone um, in the mouth and in the jaw itself. And, you know, there are complications. You can have jaw fractures, things like that. But in these really refractory cases that you have not been able to get any relief any other way, it can do wonders. Just getting, getting that antigenic response of that plaque on the teeth out of the mouth, you remove it, there's no more bacteria on the teeth to cause the immune system to go wacko, and it takes care of it. I have one, I've got two now. Um, one little, little cat from the time she was a year old, she had horrible teeth, hamburger mouth, you just looked at it and did, it looked like raw hamburger in her mouth. She got down to three pounds. She was skin and bones. She would still eat, I don't know how, but she would still eat, just losing weight like nobody's business. And I took her in and her mouth was awful. We pulled, yeah, well, we pulled, we pulled her cod, we started with the caudal teeth, we pulled them and she got better. But then she, here just in the last three, four years, she started losing weight again. And we went back in and her bottom canines were just, again, looked like hamburgers. So we pulled them and we left the top ones in and she's, she's fine. And here just two weeks ago, another cat, white cat. White cats seem to have a little bit more problem with it. I don't know why. And they have a higher incidence of squamous cell carcinoma as well. Don't know why, don't know what it is with the white gene, but uh, she's a white cat and she was having some problems. So we went in we had a dental cleaning and everything we pulled five teeth initially and Because all the rest of them it seemed to look okay and she went along for about two years and Then she started developing this horrible ugly lesion on her lip on her one side and I thought, I thought it was all over, but she would not let me get close enough to actually look in her mouth. It's it, it just horribly painful. And took her in. He looked, the, the dentist looked at it, because our clinic doesn't have dental radiography. And if, if you're considering dental extractions, go to somebody that has dental radiography, because it's the only way to do it. If you don't have dental radiography, you don't know if you get all the roots out. And leaving a root in can cause the inflammation just as easily um, and the stimulation so you want to make sure you get everything out so go to somebody that has dental radiography if you get extractions done um, but he saw the the one side he was a little bit concerned because it was unilateral it was just on the one side normally stomatitis does not tend to be one side or the other it tends to be the whole mouth but we did a biopsy and it was, it was simple, lymphocytic plasmacytic stomatitis and not squamous cell. He was a little bit concerned it might be squamous cell. And that's another good reason to go into your veterinarian for any type of swelling or mass or lesion on your cat's teeth to find out if it's stomatitis or if it's something a little bit worse. Um, just do a biopsy and they'll be able to tell you really quick. Um, but we pulled her teeth, she's got her canines, and they did pull her incisors because they were really mobile. Her bottom, I think bottom incisors were really mobile, so they just took them out too. And I had that done just two weeks ago. In a week, you, you, her, her entire mouth is back to normal.
and she's gaining weight, she's grooming herself, everything like that. So it, it makes a huge dis difference in these cats that have the chronic bad stomatitis that nothing else is really touched. And, and they go on to do really well. People think, oh, you know, how are they gonna eat and everything. They eat dry food, they eat canned food, it doesn't matter. They, they eat, they do really well. So, but half of them, like I said, some of the experts say, pull the teeth, don't do anything else. The next one says, no, 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 try, try the other things first before you pull the teeth because it is a pretty intense surgery and it, it, it isn't without its consequences or potential consequences, but they can be good. It can actually do some good. And the majority, I would, I would tend to say the majority of the cats that have mouth extractions resolve the stomatitis. There have only been one or two that I've seen that have, it didn't make any difference um, in the mouth, so. Tooth resorption, and again, this is getting back to Connie's question about how painful it is. Um, if it's just on the root surface, not exposed to the pulp cavity, not really painful. But the problem is this is a progressive disease. You're not, it's not gonna fix it. You can try uh, res restoration. You can use enamel products, fillers, crowns, that sort of thing, but it isn't gonna stop the disease. And really, once that lesion gets into the pulp cavity, it's horribly, horribly painful for the cat. And really your only course of action is to actually pull that tooth. And sometimes it's gonna be it's going to be pretty easy because there's nothing really holding it into the jaw and it'll pop right out. Some of them can be challenging because only half the root is resorbed and the other half isn't. And again, that's why I stress if you're going to have any of the procedures done, go to a veterinarian that has dental radiography so that they can x-ray and find out what exactly they're dealing with in the first place. And then once it's done, they can make sure they got everything out. Because it can leaving leaving some roots and things like that in the gum can cause problems mm -hmm. down the line. Um, things like malocclusions, swellings, and fractures. Um, there's there are surgical corrections for malocclusions uh, if you want to go that route. Um, a lot of times we get puppies that have their jaw will outgrow their. Uh, their lower jaw will outgrow their upper jaw and their canines actually impinge and cause re retardation of, of the jaw actually growing even more because those canines are basically holding it into place. Um, those type of things, there, there are surgical corrections for them. You can for cats. Most people don't really go to that extreme as far as, as and unless there's, you know, something horribly wrong that the cat, you know, can't actually prehend food in order to eat, that sort of thing. Usually not really something that most people go to try to correct on a great basis in cats. But swellings and fractures, those are things you want to have looked at. Might be something as simple as a tooth root abscess, if, especially if you get a cat that has a swelling up here below their eye that kind of pops up out of nowhere all of a sudden. It can be one of the canine, the canine roots on these upper roots. They, you'd be amazed how far back into the jaw, into the gum line that they go. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, they're like, yeah, but the tooth is here and the swelling's like clear up here. But if they get a tooth root abscess, it's, and it's gonna come out in it's that area and they have these big swellings and things like that that pop up on their faces. Um, I was doing an interview in Tulsa at a BCA all feline clinic and we had a Burmese come in that almost had another head <coughs> on the side of his face. And it was a tooth root abscess that had swollen up and he's, she's like, I don't know what's going on. His face is all swollen and he doesn't want to eat. And we got the syringe out and pus came out and we drained it. And the cat, as soon as he woke up from anesthesia, he's like, well, where's the food? <laughs> you know, cause it, but it was, it was almost the size of his head was the swelling. Um, but unless you go and find out from the vet, you don't know whether you're dealing with neoplasia, tooth root swelling, you know, some sort of other granuloma complex type, or the, the ulcer, uh, rodent ulcer type problem. So 
those are things you want to go into your vet to have checked out. And of course, fractures, we can, re we can repair jaws pretty easily, wires in jaws, things like that. And for your neoplasia too, some of the more aggressive forms of neoplasia, I mean, they can do things like uh, hemimandibulectomies where they take out half of the jaw. Some cats and dogs do very, very well, and it gives them a little bit longer lease on life and things like that. Um, and also chemotherapy along with that. Some people go to that extreme um, as far as, as taking care of their cat or dog. Um, but those are type of things that really surgical and veterinary management are really your only options as far as manage management are concerned. Um, so just to kind of review things, uh, hopefully you all have a better understanding of classifications of dental issues and a clearer idea of what causes and some of the risk factors are associated with these diseases and also how to manage and kind of maintain good dental health as far as your kitties go uh, are concerned today and at this time I'll take any <laughs> questions that you might have. Mm -hmm. That's my knees are, that's my third piece. <laughs> Maybe? Yeah. Um, for the dental um, rinses, the gels, the water additives, what are they actually targeting in the mouth? Are they you know, killing bacteria? Are they cleaning, removing plaque? What are they really targeted to do? Most of them are targeting the bacteria on the, on the teeth, um, trying to get rid of that bacteria. But again, just getting rid of the bacteria isn't really going to do everything. We also need to get that biofilm, kind of scrape that sticky film that gets on off because that's what's, you know, causing and it as it creeps up into the gingiva under the gum line, that's where you get the problems. But they're mostly, they have a type of antibacterial component to them as well. But, and that's why they're not as effective as brushing because the brushing, you know, gets, actually scrapes that biofilm plaque off of the teeth and gets it off. Whereas the rinses may rinse some of it off, but it's really more trying to rinse that bacteria off. And when that bacteria is in that biofilm, I mean, that's where it becomes hard because a lot of the antibiotics that we have out there don't like to penetrate that biofilm. And so the, the rinses and things like that aren't quite as effective as manually getting that biofilm off the teeth. And I, I didn't really touch upon, you know, what, what signs that your cats may be displaying as far as if they have dental issues. And there's, I mean, they're the obvious ones, like the tooth root abscess, you have a big swelling on the side of the face. I mean, those are the very obvious signs. But some things as simple as all of a sudden your cat is being shy, doesn't want to come out. And you might think, oh, well, somebody's picking on somebody or, you know, whatever reason. Um, dropping food, if they're having difficulty prehending their food, so you see them, you know, dropping a lot of food or you notice around, you know, the food bowl that there's a lot of scattered food. Unless I know some cats take a bite and spit it out and then they eat it and a few things like that. But if you notice, you know, or you see them when you, when you watch them eat, you see them actually having difficulty keeping the food in the mouth. Um, that can be a sign of dental disease. Again, weight loss. Um, weight loss for anything, I mean, yes, it, there are multitude of things that it could be, but it could be something as simple as they have dental issues. Because that was the first sign on my, my one that I had, my first one that I had to have the caudal extractions on it. She just started losing weight. We took her in for her blood work, and her blood work was completely normal. I thought she had hyperthyroidism because she was still eating and eating, but she's losing weight and losing weight and losing weight. Thyroid was fine. Um, so if you notice weight loss, um, and like I said, just being shy, being antisocial, hiding, excuse me, hiding a lot, not wanting to have their teeth messed with. I know for my one Maine Coon, it kind of his show career ended because they kept they kept looking at his muzzle and they kept squeezing his muzzle and he had he had gingivitis and stomatitis and it hurt 
and uh, Merlene's, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, Becca the Tank Girl, her household pet, she, for the longest time, she hated going to shows, and we finally figured out, because they were, they were looking at her face and, and, and touching her hair, and she had really bad stomatitis mm -hmm. around these back uh, folds, and it hurt, it hurt for her to, to be grabbed like that, and you know, so things like that, if, you, if you're going suddenly, you're like, well, why is this cat suddenly not, you know, wanting to be shown and isn't enjoying being shown? You know, take a look at their mouth and see if there's something, something uh, going on. Um, but those are the, the subtle, and, and cats, cats are subtle. Cats don't want to show you that there's anything wrong right. until they're really, really bad. Yeah. And so, but just noticing some little things and, and keeping an eye on your cat as far as that's concerned, can can make a big difference. Well, and a lot of, oh, go ahead. We had one that um, just recently, that's why I asked if it was painful. The only indication we had anything was wrong was one day she was sitting there and just dripping saliva, just sounding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. So I lifted up her her lip here, and it was just horribly, massively swollen yeah. in there. Yeah. And when I took her in, she said she's already lost a couple of teeth. And yeah. it was that resorption mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, but she never lost weight. She's chubby little thing. Yeah, some don't. Some don't lose weight, but yeah, hypersalivation. Hypersalivation can go along with nausea. I mean, sometimes if they're nauseated, they'll they'll drool a lot. But but hypersalivation is is something too that can be associated with dental disease. So definitely. do you see increased vomiting? Maybe a cat that doesn't typically just starts vomiting. More. Sometimes there has been some studies linking the the chronic uh, stomatitis and like irritable bowel syndrome mm -hmm. IBS because again it, it's it boils down to the immune system and it's a an over exaggeration or under exaggeration of the immune system and so they tend to see cats that have the bad dental disease stomatitis problems also tend to have a little bit of the irritable bowel syndrome and vomiting can go along with that <coughs> as well so it it's possible. Yeah. Plus, she, she thinks she's a a, a, a bet or something. A, a, yeah, a BBM. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I you. have a question. Yep. Yeah. Does the water affect? Can can something in the water affect devil disease? It's possible. Um, and again, they haven't really done studies to check on it, but softening process could have issues. Could see some problems and just the filtration. Um, of it, I mean, it's possible. It's very possible that it could play a role. Um, but again, it, it's not the be all end all because you would think that all cats in a household would have. If it was just the water, mm -hmm. they would have pro and They would all have would, problems. The and humans I've got, would too. Yeah, and the humans would too. If but I think like I that. think it could potentially play a role because of just the softening techniques and everything like that that happen in with with the water. <laughs> um, it, it could play an impact. And again. You know, the feral cats don't have that problem, but is it because they're just not living that long, or, you know, is it because they're not drinking softened water? Mm -hmm. We don't know yet. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. You. You're welcome.